If you can, go with me to, let's go to, to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the yoke of of living for the Lord is easy. Live for yourself, that's tough. And the promise that the, Jesus said is that you will find rest for your souls. Think about that. Your souls. What is a soul? The Bible, you know, according to the Word of God, there's rest for your souls, but many people don't even realize what a soul is. You are three in one. You have a body. That's the one that gets big and small. That's the one that's hairy yesterday and not so hairy tomorrow. It changes. And then you have a spirit that's the one connected to God. That's the one that comes alive in salvation. But then you have a soul, and the soul is your thoughts and your emotions. It's the place where you make decisions on the direction that you're going to act. You're going you're gonna to command your body to go. And so there's a battle in your mind, and that's the realm of the soul. And that soul is manipulated, and it's influenced by experiences and education, uh, things that, that you've, you've gone through, things that people have said to you, circumstances that you've gone through. Those are all influencers of the soul. Now, when you hear the word of God, the word of God is truth. Jesus is the truth. And in spite of all the information and the knowledge that you hear and the experiences you had yesterday, when the truth comes in Jesus Christ, it sets your soul free. Instead of thinking, how am I going to pay the bills? But the word of God says that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So I have peace. Everybody say peace. peace. You're able to sleep. You're able to act and operate. No fear is in your life because you are guarding your soul with the word of God. You, are, you, are, you, have, you have changed your thoughts. You have changed the way you, you process information. Instead of just seeing what's in front of you and immediately experiencing all the negativity and fear rising up because of what might be happening to, before you is terrible, the word of God rises up and counteracts every one of those things that you are seeing because the Bible says the things that you see are temporary, but the things that you believe are eternal. Your body feels one way. You go to the doctor, the doctor gives you a bad report. In the past, you might have been in so much fear of what the negatives can happen. Doctor might say, well, I don't know if there's any good hope for you, but things are happening bad. Your body's being deteriorated. But the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. Which one will you grab a hold of? Will you grab a hold of the report of the doctor that says that you're going to die? Or going to grab a hold of the report of the Lord that says you shall live? And so you, if you grab a hold of the report, report of the negative, fear comes in, worry, stress, frustration comes in, anxiety comes in. But when you grab all the word of God, there's freedom, there's deliverance, there is rest. I know that report says this, but this report says that. And the report of the world changes, but the report of my God never changes. And so Jesus said, just come. Come to me. Whatever you carry, whatever heavy burdens, whatever is on your life, just come to me. Come to me. And you will find rest for your souls. How many of you like to rest? I like to rest. I, you know, right, we, we live in a society that's overcome by anxiety. We are a medicated society. They have drugs for everything. 
They have drugs when you feel when you feel hyper. They have drugs when you feel sad. You know, I've been, you know, I'm friends with Edo, and, and I, I've, I've been able to see his character and his personality and everything. You know, if Edo, if you were growing up here, they would, get, they would put you on Ritalin. <laughs> I mean, he is a hyper guy. He's like, you know, we'd be talking, and, and it's like that cartoon, squirrel. <laughs> He's a hyper guy, you know. I, I, and that's what happens in society, in our society. They got drugs for everything. They want to put you addicted. They, listen, they don't just say, take this drug. They say, take this drug, and you're on this drug for the rest of your life. That don't sound like help to me. That sounds possession. It sounds like possession. That sounds like oppression. They put, they put our kids on that. They put, our, they, they, put, they put people that are going through stressful situations on those things. There's so much drugs that in the, in the Great Lakes, all the fish are contaminated with antidepressant drugs because of the, the, the runoff, because of the, the, the sewage that has gone in there. All the people that have taken so much drugs have influenced all the, all the fish, so they're all in, on, uh, on drugs. What is the worst thing in our, in, a, in our society right now is people that are, that are on drugs, as far as, like, you know, they're addicted to drugs. They're addicted to all these things. Why? Because they're looking for peace. They're looking for peace. I don't have peace. I'm so stressed. I'm so worried. I need something. That doesn't sound like a pill is going to set you free. It's just a band-aid, but there's no healing. The only one that can set you free is Jesus. The only one that can give you peace is the Prince of Peace. The only one that can remove anxiety is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The only one that could put your life back together is Jesus. Amen. And what does Jesus say? He doesn't say, if you're really good, maybe you'll find me. If you're really good, I'll help you. He says, come to me. Why don't, why don't you, instead of, instead of taking the pill, why don't you just come to Jesus? Amen. Instead, of, instead of running off and trying to figure out what you have to do, to get your life in order, why don't you just come to Jesus? Amen. There's some people that the only time they come to Jesus is if everything else has been destroyed. Why don't you just come to Jesus where you're at? You don't have to go to hell to find the Lord Jesus Christ. You could come to him today and cast all your care upon the Lord and give it all to God so that he could give you rest. Amen. He could give you peace. And he'll give you joy. Amen. And, you know, that's the word that the Lord has been putting in my heart, is just resting in the Lord. In spite of everything else, in spite of what's going on, I'm going to rest in the Lord. I, am, I might be going through a difficult time, but it's okay. I'm going to go through it. It's just a moment, but I'm going to find rest in the middle of the trial in the Lord. In the middle of the fight, in the middle of the conflict, I'm going to rest in the Lord. You know, you might have some issues that are so big, and it looks like a big old mountain before you. It looks like a big old tornado or storm coming your way. But in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the, the, the tornado, or whatever you're facing, rest in the Lord. Tell your neighbor, rest in the Lord. You have to rest. You can't, you can't be trying to figure out everything and trying to, to come up with your own way of deliverance. You have to begin to trust the Lord. And rest in him. Amen. In Psalms 37, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. This is verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Tell your neighbor, trust the Lord. So, you know, one of the reasons why fear and anxiety and, and depression and all those things rise up is because you're just not trusting God. You're not trusting God. Someone says, well, well, I trust God, but I'm so afraid. You're not trusting God. You're not trusting God. You haven't gone deep enough in the things of God. You haven't gone deep in the presence of the Lord. You haven't allowed the Spirit of God to minister to you, to remove that anxiety and that fear, to, you know, to get rid of all that stuff that's tr trying to destroy you. You're not trusting God. 
The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not just part of it, all of it. You have to trust in the Lord all your heart. One of the things I love about water baptism is you go all the way in. And so when you trust God, you have to go all the way in. You can't say, I trust you, God, except for this part. I'm holding it out. You have to trust God all the way. You can't just, you can't just put your toe in the water. You have to jump on in and surrender everything to God. Say, Lord, I cast it all on you. I trust you with everything. I trust you in my marriage. I trust you in my future. I trust you in my life. I'm trusting in you. And then the Bible says, don't lean on your own understanding. I don't understand what you're going to do. I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand this thing. But the Word of God says, don't lean on your own understanding. To begin to just lean on His understanding. I don't understand it, but you do. I don't know why I'm going through this situation, but you do. And so I'm going to trust in you. When I was growing up, there were times that my father would tell me to do some things. And I didn't understand why he told me to do them. Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to follow? Why do I have to, but, but, but. But my, there's times that, that my dad would not give me explanation. He'd just say, just do it. Just do it. Because he understood that, he, he knew that I would not understand why he was telling me to do it. But I needed to do it because it was best for me. People of God, you have to let God speak to you. And let God lead you and direct you. And even if you don't understand it, it's okay. As long as he understands it, it's okay, amen. Lean on his understanding, not yours, amen. Praise God. I was going through a situation early in the ministry. We had so many issues and so many financial needs and burdens. And just, you know, from before, you know, years before I even became the pastor, I was dealing with this, these things of needs and the ministry. And personally, you know, I've, I've never been stressed personally, even though there was nothing there, but I had God's word. And so personally, it was never about how am I going to be taken care of. I just knew God would take care of me. But the stress and the anxiety I was going through was for the ministry. My father used to tell me, he said, every time you turn on the lights in this church, it costs $40 just flicking the light on. So he ran out, don't turn on the light. <laughs> just when you see all the needs, you know, and it's a big church, a lot of needs, a building needs to be, you know, taken care of, and all the outreaches and television and, and the bills, you know, they were so huge, so huge. And, and there, was, there, was, there was, you know, offerings that were coming were so small. And you would look at what you had and, and you would see what you need and it just didn't match up. But somehow every day, God would supernaturally take care of us. God would supernaturally feed us. You know, there are times that angels would just come and minister to us. But when you go through that day after day, year after year, it weighs upon you. Where even you got... you. You don't even want to answer the phone because you know it's going to be another, another bill that you can't pay. I'm sure none of you have ever gone through that before. And so after a couple of years of day by day standing on the edge of faith where God, I don't know how you're holding me up, but you're going to hold, please hold me up. Year after year, day by day, standing at the edge one day I got a phone call. I was driving my daughter, Crystal, to, she was playing basketball at the time. She must have been about 13. And I was, I was taking her to the game and, and uh, I got a phone call and it was another huge need that needed something like $20,000 by the next day or something, or you lose something, you know? And it's always high numbers and I'm like, I'm hearing that news and I'm just, all right, okay, all right, we'll talk tomorrow. I hung up the phone. We get to the, the gym, and I tell Crystal, Crystal, go in, go and get yourself ready for the game. I'm going to stay out here for a little bit. And I was in my car, and 
I was already at the place. Now, understand, this is not a week. It's not a month. I'm talking about year after year after year on this edge. I was, I wasn't tired. I was angry. And I wanted to make sure God knew I was angry. And so I had it out with God. I'm in the car by myself. And I said, God, I'm angry. I'm pissed off. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I'm angry. I'm telling you this. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to pray. I don't want to worship. I don't want to do any of that. I just want you to know that I am angry. That was my cry. I got out of that car just angry. And I get into the gym. The teams are practicing. And I'm sitting down in the the bleacher. And I hear the still, small voice of the Lord. I didn't want to hear from him. I just wanted to be angry. I was tired, frustrated. I'm just angry. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. He says, what are you doing? And in my spirit, man, I'm talking to God. I'm saying, God, you know what I'm doing I'm watching my daughter play basketball. In the still small voice, he says, are you having a good time? I said, no, I'm not having a good time. Why not? You know why. I'm angry. I'm tired. And then he says, when do you need the resources? God, you know I need them tomorrow. And then he says, what are you doing? I told you what I was doing. I'm watching my daughter play basketball. Are you having a good time? No. Why not? Because I'm angry. Why are you angry? You know, I need money to take care of the needs tomorrow. And then he began to speak to me. He said, when do you need it? Tomorrow. And he said, then why are you allowing it to steal your today? He says, I've taken you this far. I'm faithful. I'm ready in your tomorrow. What you need will be provided. Yes, I know that you've been on the edge, but you haven't fallen because I've upheld you. So trust me. I'll take care of you tomorrow. This is a day that I made. Rejoice and be glad in it. When I heard that word, I said, yes, Lord, you have blessed me with this day. And I'm going to enjoy it. And so the whole game, I began to scream and cheer on Crystal as that team went on to lose very bad. Since then, I've learned to just rest in the Lord. That no matter what's going on, He's still Lord, He's still King, and He's always faithful. Some of you might be going through something right now that you might be angry and frustrated. I want to let you know that's not going to change God. Only faith, only faith, God hears and God sees. 
What does Jesus say about that? In John 14, verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Tell your neighbor, peace is a gift from Jesus. And so you just got to receive it by faith. I receive the peace of God over my life. I receive the peace of God over my mind. I receive the peace of God over my family. I receive the peace of God over my finances. I receive not my peace, his peace. Remember, Jesus rose from the dead. He seated at the right hand side of the Father, and he left us two incredible gifts. Two incredible gifts. He left us the Holy Spirit, and he left us his peace he gives to us. Amen. And so just receive the peace of God today. How do we receive the peace of God? We go to that scripture. Back in Matthew. Matthew 11. Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you, and learn from me. For I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We come to Jesus, and we surrender. We cast all our cares upon him. We always give it to him, Lord. This doesn't belong to me, it belongs to you. But Lord, I receive the things that you say that are mine. I receive your peace in my life. 